a survivor of rape and now a mother to two small children, you know, it seems like being able to purchase a firearm of my choosing and being able to carry that wherever my, me and my family are, it seems like my basic responsibility as a parent at this point. I have been unspeakably victimized once already, and I refuse to let that happen again to myself or my kids. Really, the people that are on the pro-gun side of this argument are people like me that had no interest in this until I became a victim of a horrendous crime, and it wasn't until that point that I realized my vital right to self-defense is going to be the most important things for me and now my two kids. Violent crimes do happen. Protecting myself is my right. I've been properly trained, I've had my background checked, and I've gone through all the legal requirements to own, operate, and carry a gun. There's no substitution for sleeping with a gun. And there's no substitute for my ability to carry a concealed weapon on my person. Ladies and gentlemen, Second Amendment advocate and Colorado's own Kimberly Corbin. everybody. I can't tell you what an honor it is to be here. It's so great to see you all. Um, for those of you from out of town, welcome to Colorado. My name's Kimberly Corbin. Um, I actually grew up just an hour north of here in Greeley. It's a college town and that's where I went to school. In 2006, I was a sophomore at the University of Northern Colorado. I had just moved off campus to some apartments and was looking forward to a wonderful summer of hanging out with my friends and working and laying by the pool. But in the early morning hours of May 12, 2006, I woke up feeling like I couldn't breathe. And my face was covered, and I hear a man saying, shut up, don't say a thing. And my life changed at that moment. For there, I was held for two hours and sexually assaulted in my own bedroom. At 20 years old, I had to lay there thinking, this is how I'm going to die. What was the last thing I told my parents, my brother, friends. I managed to survive that attack and I reported to law enforcement. The Weld County District Attorney's Office successfully prosecuted that case and my offender is spending 24 years to life currently in the Department of Corrections here in Colorado. As I was getting ready to prepare for trial and sentencing, I started thinking why did this have to happen to me? I suffered from depression, PTSD, seizures, and I'm thinking if I could just help one person not have to experience this, then that would all be worth it. So I decided to release my name to the media. I overcame a lot of counseling, I went back to school, and I made this something that was going to direct the rest of my life in a positive way instead of letting it define me as a victim. I changed myself into a survivor. I spoke around the country just on sex assault because this is what happens when the system works how it's supposed to. You have people like me that are willing to step forward and bring light to issues that otherwise probably wouldn't see the light of day. But what was great is that in 2013, Colorado served as the litmus test for the rest of the nation when we saw these gun control packages being pushed through. I was a grad school student at UNC pursuing criminal justice and for me, I had decided that Concealed carry was the way that I wanted to protect myself. I never took the right to self-defense seriously until I absolutely needed it and was scared looking out the window in the two hour time frame, waiting for somebody to walk by and save me and no one ever did. So when legislators were trying to put myself and other victims, other Coloradoans and citizens of this country into a box that would make us victims again, I got off, off of my couch and I went down in front of the Senate and told my story of rape and why my vital right to self-defense needed to be protected. I was speaking on behalf of the campus carry bill, but it seemed that this opened a conversation nationally that needed that kind of recognition. Luckily, the campus carry bill was killed, but this started a much bigger fight for me and for the rights of people just like me across the nation. In 2016, as you all just saw, I was given the opportunity to address President Obama on CNN's town hall. I didn't realize what a big deal it was until I had to go through three layers of security and secret service and a vetting process while I wasn't able to carry my firearm. He walked in and all I saw was another voting citizen that should have the exact same power and rights as I should. 
So I asked him my question, and I wanted to know why he felt or could not see that his administration was actually making myself and my children less safe. I have a one and a two-year-old, and that two-year-old is turning three years old tomorrow. That is why I am looking to protect myself and my kiddos, and your kids as well. When I was speaking in 2013, I was unaware that the president of the National Rifle Association was David Keene. The National Rifle Association started fighting for my rights before I ever knew that I needed them. There are so many places across the country and organizations just like the NRA that are looking to protect our rights, not just the Second Amendment, but all across the Constitution. And those people are more important as more people become victims. And it's not just victims of evil in the world or people that wish to perpetrate crimes. It's evil when it's oppressive politicians and people that act like kings instead of those that we've elected to represent us. As I said, David Keene is the former president of the National Rifle Association. He's currently the opinion editor for the Washington Times. He served from 2011 until 2013, which was just when I got to find my voice and take over. I, uh, not saying that I'm in charge of the NRA by any means, but he, uh, he has done a fantastic job fighting for our rights and continues to do so, so I'm very looking forward to hearing him speak. What you all need to take away from this is that I'm not advocating for the Second Amendment to protect guns. I'm advocating for the Second Amendment to protect people. So now, please help me welcome to the stage David Keene.